Chris. Thanks for coming to my basement full of crap. We've got another episode of the Torchinsky Files here today, and keeping true to what I want to do on the show, uh, I want to show you something painfully geeky and roughly automotive related. So we're going to be looking at a game called Grand Prix from Activision uh, way back in 1982. It's a very early driving game for the Atari 2600, and what's interesting about it is the reason it looks the way it does is very telling of the limitations of the Atari 2600, and it gives a really good insight into how incredible it was that programmers were able to do absolutely anything with this ridiculously primitive piece of hardware. So let's see how they did it. First of all, the Atari 2600, as everybody knows, was one of the big game consoles of the late 70s and early 80s. It's what really started the cartridge-based console kind of craze that continues on, I guess, roughly to this day. Um, the amazing thing about the Atari, though, was how incredibly limited this thing really was. It, like, the, the types of computers that we use today were an unimaginable dream back when this thing was around. It only had 128 bytes of memory, uh, the average size of a game was between 4 and 8K, an empty Word file is bigger than that. But I think the most fascinating thing about this was where most modern computers, most video games, everything with a computer, and it has an area of memory that lets you put images on a screen. The Atari didn't even have that. When this thing was built, memory was so expensive that the idea of having enough memory for a whole screen full of images was out of the question. Well, the way the Atari got around it was it had enough for one line of memory, basically one scan line across. It had enough memory to store, and then it would just keep changing it based on the racing of the television beam that would draw an image. It was incredibly detailed and difficult to program, but programmers actually did figure it out. And the reason I want to show this racing game is because if you look at it, it explains everything about how the Atari's brains worked without you even knowing it. So this is a, a Grand Prix racing game, and it's funny because it actually, these is, this is supposed to be like a Grand Prix car here, and it's supposed to have famous tracks, including a Watkins Glen and Brands Hatch and Le Mans and Monaco, but they're all just completely straight because it doesn't curve or anything like that, so it's kind of ridiculous. Unlike most racing games of the era, where things would go up and down, you'd race vertically. Games like Monaco GP and uh, you know most of the other racing games were going up and down, they're going side to side here. So why are they doing that? And if you look at the cars, they've actually got a pretty good image going on here. The graphics are actually surprisingly good. They're multicolored, the tires are different colors, and they've got a racing stripe, and there's even some gradient kind of color effects to give it some shading. It actually looks really, really good. And keep in mind, the Atari was originally designed just to play Pong-like games. It was only really designed to have like moving sticks and the bouncing balls around, and maybe a little single color tank. So how did they do this? Now in the Atari's memory, in the one line of screen memory it can store for any given line on the screen, there's actually only a few things it can have on it. It can have a background made of these really fat pixels, that's one color. It can have sprites, two of those, but they're really just eight, segment, eight pixel wide lines. That's it, or you can, you can make any pattern, but it's just one linear line of pixels, and then you can have two of those, and you can have like a ball and a missile, which are basically just dots. That's it. So how do you get a really good looking car if that's what you're working with? Well, the trick is you're changing what's being drawn every horizontal line. That's why they made the game go side to side instead of up and down. So when it comes to the car, you start by, the sprite originally is just the black line of the tire, and then it, it, you completely change it the next scan line down, and you put the little dot in there, and you keep scan changing and changing. And even though it was never meant to do some of these things, clever programmers figured out how to make multicolored sprites by changing the color information as the electron beam went down. It was never intended to do this. The programmer, who I believe was David Crane for this one, figured it out. In fact, he figured out how to do it before he wrote this game. The reason this is a racing game at all is because he was working on a way to simply make multicolored sprites in the screen. And because you're changing it every horizontal line, you could only change colors in horizontal bands. So he was making some little test images, and he found that they kind of looked like racing stripes on a car. And that's what gave him the inspiration to actually try making a racing game with cars. 
And the Atari, surprisingly, could do 128 colors, which was a lot more than most could do at the time. So the nice thing about it is it lets them do things where you can make really dark edges and get gradually lighter to make like a grading effect to, get, to give the illusion of something actually curved. Much more detail via color than you could actually draw with real pixels. It's super clever. Everything about this is incredibly clever. So even though this thing was only made to make balls and lines, they figured out a way by basically tricking the system every time the scan line ends, putting in stuffing new information in there, new color information, new shape information. You don't just have to make a stick or a little simple tank. You can actually make a fairly detailed little race car. It's amazing. The fact that it's as limited as it is and they're doing as much as they've managed to do is really something incredible about, about the Atari. And that's actually really what I love about old Atari games completely. So yeah, there you go. Next time you see an old Atari game and you want to laugh at how crude and primitive it is, remember how many things they had to overcome just to get it to display anything. And then, you know, I think you'll be a little impressed. I sure as hell am. Hey, thanks for coming out to my basement, listening to a bunch of geeky crap, and I'll see you next week.